Hey everybody, welcome. <clears throat> Hi everyone, hope the class is still going well for you. Uh, Hi everyone, I hope the class is still going well for you. I have to point something out about LS3 Unit 8, the electrostatic shielding lecture. One of you caught me in a mistake. I had a nice lecture going. Shielding, Faraday cage, I love talking about Faraday cages. A charge on the outside can't create a field inside the metal cage or inside a metal shell. And that was all fine. And then in the last 15 seconds, for some reason, I had this brilliant flash that I should also point out that a charge inside the shell can't make a field outside. And I just said it and thought, well, I'll make sure it's true later. Well, I never got around to it, and of course, it's not true. And ABCDM31 noticed because he or she really understands Gauss's law. So let's look at what would really happen if we were to put a charge inside a conducting shell. So here is the shell in cross-section. Here, I'm not gonna put hatch marks on it because I'm gonna draw Gaussian surfaces on it. So this part is the metal shell, this part is empty. External field can't get in, we covered that. Let's put a charge plus Q in the middle. Certainly, it's gonna create a field inside the shell. And if we apply Gauss's law here, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Gauss's law here, we would basically get Coulomb's law. We would find the field goes as one over R squared and decays, etc. Those field lines would naturally hit perpendicular to this inside metal surface. But what if we were to draw Gauss's law, a Gaussian sphere here, well there, integral of E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, we know the E field inside the metal has to be zero. The electrostatic fields inside a metal is always zero. Zero equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, now we have a problem because Q enclosed is not zero. There's a positive charge in here, but we say the field has to be zero, and, and symmetry keeps fields from canceling out to make zero. Well, then what must happen is negative Q is attracted to this inside surface, okay? So we have minus Q builds up here. And when I draw it there, I mean it goes all the way around. We have a total charge of minus Q distributed over the inside surface of the metal shell, conducting shell, and that's what you'd expect because these are free. If, if a bunch of free negative charges see this positive charge, they're gonna come towards it and enough will come to make the field inside zero, so the total that comes to the inside surface must be minus Q. That way, minus Q plus Q gives you Q enclosed of zero. Wonderful, now, what if we put the Gaussian surface out here? Well, let's see, Gauss's law, integral of E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So, we don't know what E field is. It doesn't have to be zero. It's not in a metal. We need to think about what it is. Well, what is Q enclosed? Well, you could say that these two balance out and make zero, but wait a minute, the, the, the conductor was neutral. It was just a neutral shell. If minus Q came to the inside surface, now the outer surface is covered with plus Q. So we can't use a neutral material to cancel out this charge. You could say this one cancels this one, but there's still a total charge of plus Q in there. And if we do all of our symmetry, then it becomes E times the area of the circle, four pi R squared. And basically, outside, it looks like Coulomb's law for the point charge, as though the metal did nothing, as though the metal weren't even there. So the field does get outside. Now, I could say you are seeing the field of this one, you're seeing the field of these, if I wanted to really somehow technically be correct. But no, the field does get outside, and I will refrain from adding little 15-second last-minute thoughts to lectures. That's the moral of the story. Don't, don't improvise on a physics lecture. 